Today we're going to be looking at the Bells of Steel light commercial rack and with everything going on in 2020 I really needed a home gym setup. The big thing that drew me into the Bells of Steel rack was the flat feet setup and in my basement the height is definitely a big constraint and the final assembled height of this rack is 84 and a half inches so I've still got a little clearance in some areas of my basement but as you'll see I've got a lot of air ducts and some uh, sump pump drain lines and um, water drain pipes throughout the area. So I really need something that would fit in a small area. And here you're looking at the instruction sheet that's included with the rack. And they give you the bill of materials up top, just some nuts, washers and bolts. And there's a diagram here, not listed steps so they're all numbered out one two three and four as to what sequence you're supposed to put them in and you want to make sure you pay attention to that because i definitely did some out of order and had to disassemble and reassemble some pieces quite a few times here's a look at some of the hardware you get i think they're zinc coated bolts nuts and washers would have been nice if they were black just to kind of match everything but not too big a deal for me as long as they hold everything together Here's a look at the flat feet, and for me, I've got them on top of some stall mats, and I had some painter's tape put down just to kind of locate the, the four corners of the rack just to make sure that the rack isn't moving around too much. And over the past couple months here, I haven't seen the rack move around too much from the tape, so um, pretty good stability overall, and whenever I'm racking bench or squats, um, no tipping over or any issues like that. The rack is a matte black powder coat and overall it came in pretty good finish. But uh, since it came in UPS ground, there were some scratches and dings in some areas. And on the uprights, you've got some laser cut numbers just to kind of tell you where everything is. And you've got two inch spacing throughout. And then once you get to the bench area, You've got the one inch west side spacing, which was big for me since I wanted a little more adjustability so I could find the right spot to set up for bench. And since I'm the only one using the rack, I've got some blue painters tape and I kind of wrote bench, squat, safety, bench, safety, just to kind of kind of help locate where to put the J hooks and the safety straps. I definitely think they're a nice improvement over the standard pipe safeties, but I did have an issue trying to set up the straps so that the bar could kind of roll away from me in a downward fashion if I were to use it on bench, but uh, I could still kind of roll it up if it's sitting on the straps. And so the first accessory we're gonna look at are the plate pegs, which just slide onto the rack like a J hook. Overall, pretty good. Welds look okay but i'm sure they're strong enough to hold um, you'll see the end cap is definitely a bit beat up after some use and the coating on the peg itself has started to wear down i think it would have been nicer if uh, there was maybe like a nylon sleeve so that the plates slid on and off a little more easily but overall they function fine so not too big a deal the rack comes with four band pegs which i definitely will be using in the future but for now Got them in the front, kind of as some change plate storage. The rack comes standard with a multi-grip pull-up bar. There's a thin bar in the front and a thicker one in the rear. Then the angled ones in the middle have some knurly cut out. And here's a look at the welds again. Just okay looking, but I'm sure they'll hold up just fine. And here's a look at the knurling. They look not too great definitely some damage from shipping and handling and maybe just bad quality control they're also not very deep and with the coating on it it's actually not all that grippy at all to be honest you're probably better off putting some tape over it or something for some better grip as i said earlier you get some safety straps over some standard pipe safeties and overall liking these a lot 
the orange looks great and uh, seems to hold pretty well. So when you're doing some pin squats or maybe pin presses, you're not going to damage your bar too much and uh, overall good addition. Here are the Sandwich J cups. Welds overall look pretty good on these. You've got UHMW or some sort of hard plastic there in the middle and under a heavier load like three or 400 pounds, I haven't seen any flexion in it where that would cause the bar to rest on the metal, kind of seen on the rep sandwich shape cups that Brandon Campbell pointed out. And I've had these for about a few months and you'll see a little wear, but uh, not too bad overall and it's better than your bar digging into the metal. Here we're looking at the Roller J cups. Unfortunately, they came with uh, no UHMW on the inside there. So I went to my local Lowe's, bought a sheet of Lexan and some automotive grade double-sided tape and just put them on there myself and it's worked pretty well overall. Um, the roller sections work great and I usually just use these for bench, so I just leave them on that side. Gnarly on the bar, definitely sanded down the Lexan a little bit, but no cracking and no major damage, so definitely a good addition. Here you'll see some of the Lexan material on the bar itself. This is a Black Zinc Ohio Power Bar. Not too big a deal, just took a nylon brush, brushed it off, and it's pretty much good as new. Definitely better than your bar hitting the bare metal. The landmine attachment was an accessory that I bought. Here at the end, you'll see there's a nylon or some sort of plastic ring just to kind of protect your bar when you're putting it in. And it more or less attaches to the bottom of the rack or wherever you want. This was a great addition because I can do some accessories like a single arm overhead press or some lap pulls. One of the main selling points of this rack for me was the availability of a lat attachment. Just keep in mind that if you have the short version of this rack, it is not compatible. So you're gonna have to stick with the uh, standard height rack in order to be able to buy this attachment and have it bolt up properly. So it comes with a straight bar attachment. Unfortunately, the middle does not rotate, but not too big a deal. It also comes with an angled bar. The middle color also does not rotate on this one. Both are powder coated in black and the handles are a hard textured plastic. I've also bought a few more attachments off eBay, most notably a single arm pull down, a uh, Y rope, and also an ankle attachment to do some quad and hamstring accessories. Here's the straight bar attached to the row attachment at the bottom and a chain is provided so that you're not hunched over too far trying to pull the weight back and it's attached to the support that's kind of angled out so that you don't run into it when you're unracking weights if you've got your if you got your rack set up that way there were two rubber feet provided so that you could put it on that metal end piece so that when you're doing your sets and the weights are coming down it's not slamming against whatever surface you have your rack on and even at the bottom there of the stroke they have some rubber rings to help dampen some of the vibrations and noise when you're at the end of the rep range and here's a look at the whole cable pulley system it was pretty easy to install and coming over you'll see there's a sort of a rack for the angled pull down bar to sit on while you're not using it so it's not rattling around or swinging i think something they could have improved upon in the design of this lead attachment is to push that piece of tubing that's right above the Bells of Steel logo there out into the rack so that when you're trying to do some cable pull down or any accessories where you're angled kind of like this you'll see the cable start to impede onto that cross beam. You'll see here that the Rep Fitness PR4000 lat attachment has the pulley inside the cage so that fixes that issue. Even though it does impede on the angle that you can do your accessories at, when I'm sitting down doing lap pull downs, I don't really run into issues. It's only when I'm trying to do something like tricep extensions where it's an issue. The lat attachment also comes with this bar with a cushion pad that you can put in to help keep you down while you're doing lat pull downs if you're doing super heavy weights. So that's definitely a nice add on. 
And another big thing is that the lead attachment adds two and a quarter inch to the overall height and about a foot to the length. So to recap, the light commercial rack is a 2.3 by 2.3 inch rack with a flat feet design, but they too provide concrete anchors if that's something you still wanna do and bolt your rack down, but I find the flat feet has done plenty well by itself. The rack does come with a multi-grip pull-up bar, the roller jade cups, sandwich jade cups, safety straps, as well as band pegs. One of the downsides to the 2.3 by 2.3 inch tubing means that you can't use any of the 2 by 3 or 3 by 3 inch tubing attachments from let's say Rogue, Rep, or Titan, but um, it seems like Bells of Steel is still coming out with a bunch of things and have a decent selection of attachments that you can add on, so um, be sure to take a look at their site to see what's available to see if that's something that will be okay for you. So from Rogue, the R3 seems to be the most comparable at $695, and that does not include shipping. It's a two inch by three inch tube rack, and it has welded uprights and cross members. So it does make installing and maybe moving a, a little bit harder. Um, it doesn't have flat feet. It's a little shallower in depth, and it comes with basic attachments like pipe safeties, basic J cups, and there's no lat attachment, but there is a pulley system. Next is the Rep RP4000, which looks like it starts at about 827 as a pre-built option, and it comes with pretty basic attachments, similar to the Rogue R3, and it is a three x three rack. And looking at some of the accessory attachments that you can get, um, it definitely looks like this rack will be well over what you spend on something like the Bells of Steel light commercial with all the attachments. Moving on Titan, first we've got the X2, which is a two by two frame. Um, it's got pretty basic attachments, which isn't too bad and the price is not too bad. And it's also free shipping. And next we've got the T3, which is a two by three inch tube rack, um, which is definitely a little nicer, but um, there aren't that many attachments that come with it included. And it is in a flat feed and I think Titan just has some questionable quality. I did also purchase the Bells of Steel FID bench with my rack and overall it's been a pretty good addition to the home gym. If you guys wanna see more content like review on the FID bench or a more in-depth look at the lat attachment or any of the included rack attachments, or if you got any questions for me uh, on the rack, feel free to comment down below. And until next time, I'll see you guys.